We are back live. South Africa, Israel, Japan, they've all developed nuclear weapons. Iran has been overthrown several times by the British and the U.S. in the last century alone. Bush put out a White House press release in 2007 admitting that four different terrorist organizations, three of them, Al-Qaeda run, remember, that's who fights the Iranians, who are Shiite, is the Al-Qaeda-backed groups out of Saudi Arabia, that they were trying to destabilize the country. They've been conducting terror bombings, trying to get riots going. Again, I'm no fan of what the Iranian regime does. I'm against big government. I know historically that 99% of the time, government is bad. Government is out of control. Government is wrong. Government is abusive. The bigger the government, the more abusive it is. But the facts are, Iran is not expanding. Iran is not attacking anybody. They do fund some groups uh, in Lebanon. Uh, they tend to have tit-for-tat responses with Israel. They're not friends with Israel. They have said they want to destroy the regime that's there. And then that's misquoted as saying they want to kill everybody that's there. But the point is, if we attack Iran, they're going to shut the Strait of Hormuz. They're going to fire their tens of thousands of sunburned missiles at our fleets. They are going to spill over into Iraq. They have a defense pact with Russia and China. And they've got 66 million people, not 23 million. And they are statistically, historically, a lot better military power than Iraq. And it is going to be hellish. All because the globalists want to start a new war as a political distraction and link up with Iraq they control, with Georgia they can control, going from the west to the east, Georgia, Turkey, Iraq. Then you've got Pakistan, Afghanistan that the U.S. is in. They want Iran to link up for empire in Pax Americana in that part of the world. Oil prices will conservatively triple. That's most estimates are even higher. They're talking about five hundred dollar a barrel oil, not seventy. So that's more than a quadrupling. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. What will happen? What will develop? What will unfold if that takes place? And you see the underwear bombing, clearly a staged event. You see the fear mongering associated with that. You see the naked body scanners going in. You see the White House in speeches saying, get ready for al-Qaeda to hit us. Obama signing a police state martial law executive order dealing with biological attack. They're clearly engaged in a preparatory phase to get the people ready for a supposed terror attack against U.S. interest or in the U.S. or against the British as a pretext to go in. Remember the White House memo. Remember Downing Street memos. This was in the Times of London. The White House admitted that they told Tony Blair, we want to get a U.S. aircraft flying low, shot down to blame it on Iraq, that they knew there were no WMDs. Governor Ridge admits they created fake terror alerts for political gain. This is what they do, and they do this over and over and over again. So it's important for people to read all the mainstream news articles. I'll get a document cam for PrisonPlanet.tv viewers here. The type of hype that's going on, and not just hype or saber rattling, the actual military buildup in and around that area that is accelerating. China, Iran spur U.S. to develop anti sea battle plan. The U.S. military is drawing up a new air sea battle plan in response to threats such as China's persistent military buildup and Iran's possession of advanced weapons. According to the Pentagon's latest strategy review, the Air Force and Navy are seeking more effective ways of ensuring continued access to Western Pacific and to counter potential threats to American bases and personnel. Continuing, U.S. raises stakes on Iran by sending ships and missiles. London Guardian, Pentagon says Patriot Shield will deter strike on American allies in the Gulf. Now remember, three years ago, the Pentagon released their attack plan, two different plans. One was three months, thousands of sorties, that is fighter-bomber missions, blowing up their entire infrastructure, power plants, water plants, military bases, seaports, roads, bridges, television, media, government, infrastructure, just 
absolute crime against humanity, leveling Iran. Iran will launch real terror attacks all over the world. The government will then use those attacks to take citizens' rights. We're the real target of Homeland Security and NORTHCOM. You won't have to have stage terror attacks because terror, in many cases, is anybody resisting. If a cop tries to break your head open with a billy club and you raise your arm to block it and they break your arm, they charge you with assault. You've seen that on the news how many times? Well, if Iran raises its arm to block a blow from a billy club, that will be called terrorism. Okay? So this is the type of situation that we are talking about here. And so these defensive systems are not defensive. That's so if Iran fires its 12,000 or whatever the newest number is, sunburn missiles that go a couple hundred miles at the fleet. Remember, they tried to order Fox Phelan uh, to, they had a CENTCOM to put the fleet within range of those. He refused. Then they had the stage deal where they had Navy SEALs saying, we're Iranians, we're going to blow you up. Then later it came out that had been staged. Fox Fallon said, I'm not going to be part of this and resign. So they clearly want to start this up. A Patriot missile systems are being put in. Tensions between the U.S. and Iran heightened dramatically today with the disclosure that Barack Obama is deploying a missile shield to protect American allies in the Gulf from attack by Tehran. They, they do that before the war. Did it in 1991, 1991, did it in 2002, 2003. The U.S. is dispatching Patriot defense missiles to four countries, Qatar, United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, and Kuwait, and keeping two ships in the Gulf capable of shooting down Iranian missiles. Washington is also helping Saudi Arabia develop a force to protect its oil installations. American officials said the move is aimed at deterring an attack by Iran and reassuring Gulf states fearful that Tehran might react to sanctions by striking U.S. allies in the region. Love how they're spinning this. Remember, oh, we got to go in against Saddam. He may attack. Washington is also seeking to discourage Israel from striking against Iran by demonstrating the U.S. is preparing to, con to contend any threat and contain any threat. The developments come as Obama's attempts to emphasize diplomatic, uh, diplomacy over confrontation dealing with Iran, but that's not what they're doing. In contrast, the Bush administration's approach have failed to persuade Tehran to open its nuclear installations international controls. Iran did have all its installations open. Then they said they couldn't have peaceful reactors that have no weapons use. Then Iran, six months before they opened a new enrichment center, announced it as they're supposed to, and the media did a big hoax saying that they had kept the facility secret. It's all hoaxes, ladies and gentlemen. Here's another one. U.S. deploys land and sea-based missile shield in the Gulf to deter attack from Iran. So the, so the spin here is that they are about to attack. Separately, the Army knew into the early 1990s, and their own manual said, DU will destroy your lungs, destroy your testicles, destroy your ovaries, destroy your body, destroy your fertility, cause massive deformities in children. They doubled, tripled, quadrupled, and more. And they've used it all over Iraq. They want to use it in Iran. They're talking about using actual nukes in Iran. Iraq to sue U.S. Britain over depleted uranium bombs and, I would add, munitions. Iraq's Ministry of Human Rights will file a lawsuit against Britain and the U.S. over the use of depleted uranium bombs in Iraq. Uh, a Iraqi minister said, Iraq's Minister of Human Rights told the Assab newspaper that lawsuits will be launched based on reports from the Iraqi ministers of science and the environment. According to reports, during the first year of the U.S. and British invasion of Iraq, both countries used depleted uranium bombs. Yeah, they use munitions for tanks as well. According to the Iraq military experts, the U.S. and Britain bombed the country with nearly 2,000 tons of depleted uranium bombs during the early years of the war. It's more than that. Atomic radiation has released the number, has increased the number of babies, both of the defects in the southern province of Iraq. Yeah, Basra is really bad. Iraqi doctors say that they have been struggling to cope with the rise in the number of cancer cases, especially in cities subjugated to heavily U.S. British bombardment. The high rate of birth defects and cancer cases will move in the coming years to the central and northern provinces of Iraq since the radiation may penetrate the soil and water by air. The, min the ministry will seek compensation for the victims of the bombs. And, and what about our troops? What about the troops? They would bomb Iraqi bases, 
and then move our troops into the bases they had attacked with the A-10 Warthogs, the Abrams tanks, with their Sabo rounds, uh, with their other missiles and munitions they used, and then they would move them in to the facilities that were doused and dosed and peppered with this stuff, and the troops come home and have deformed children and die, and that's just too bad. Because, see, the government claims they care about the military. They claim they care about the troops. They always wrap themselves in the flag and wrap themselves in the valor of our troops. But then flush them down the toilet when they get sick or die. And that's what's happening politically. 